Hi guys, I am Ilya Varlamov, a Russian journalist. I travel to the most abandoned places around the world and remote towns in Russia and show them to my audience. In Russia, millions of people watch my videos. You can join them, because now I also have a channel for English speakers. Subscribe to it right now. Today we'll talk about an indigenous people surviving the Russian North. I spent a winter's night with a camp of reindeer herders in Yakutia. Yes, yes, I went to the Pole of Cold. At night, it was below 40 degrees Celsius, while the tent was just a regular tent with an oven inside. Large branches and sheepskin served as floor. You add firewood, it gets hot in the tent. In 15 minutes, it's over. 15 minutes later, if you don't add more firewood, the temperature drops below zero. I went through all this to meet Evian reindeer herders. By the way, the Evians and the Evinks are two different ethnicities, even though related. The latter ones are better known to Russian people because they used to have their own region within Russia. Evink Autonomous Okrug. A majority of both Evinks and Evians live in the Yakutia region which makes it even more confusing. Moreover, these people have similar traditional livelihoods. Those are reindeer herding, hunting, and fishing. I went to visit the Avins to see how people of this small numbered group live with their culture and language on the brink of extinction, to see their customs and traditions, which might no longer be there in a decade or so. For more people to discover the wonderful Evians and their extraordinary lifestyle, like this video and leave comments below. That'll help to promote the video. These are gloves. I put mittens on gloves not to get cold. I feel really warm now. My cameraman must be jealous. And this is the coolest fur hat. Top quality. These beautiful reindeer will now bring us to the camp. Okay, I'm ready. Obviously, reindeers are the main part of the camp. You'll be surprised to know that the word deer is an insult in Russian, when in fact deers are incredibly cute, smart, and kind. And a reindeer sleigh ride is so fun, I feel like Santa Claus. Not much snow here, and it feels like the road is made of stones. I feel like this deer is gonna stab me with this horn. What's the lowest temperature here in winter? It'll get to negative 60. Negative 60, and how does that feel? We can survive. Isn't it too cold? No, it's fine. Oh, wow. We have traditional clothes for severe weather. It's made of animal hides. There are deerskin boots. So deerskin is the warmest. Yeah, of course, sheep and deerskins. Not puff jackets? No, no, that's because it's warm now. Now it's warm? Yeah, it is. It's very warm now. <laughs> How, what's the temperature right now? I'd say around negative 35, negative 30. Having heard this, I decided to take a closer look at the clothes that help the Evians to endure freezing temperatures. Women's umti. Mm -hmm. Very nice. A local craftswoman makes them. These are baby skin boots. Reindeer skin, right? Yes. I see. This is a felt boot. It has double layering. All the materials are organic. The shoes are handmade. Your mom makes them, right? Yeah, mom makes them. Here are some hats. I see. You see, there's fur inside. Reindeer fur? No, 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 it's, it's moose. Oh, elk. Yes, elk. From this side, it's reindeer. Outside, it's reindeer. Here, it's woodchuck. This is woodchuck. Yes, woodchuck. This one is muskrat. Muskrat. This is the skin of a mountain sheep. I see. It's all handmade. Who processes the skins? Women do. Yes, women. 
Nice. This is leather. Genuine leather. It's also moose. Elk, I mean. Can you see a difference? Yeah, it's thick. We cut this part from here so it lasts longer. You live here without any network. There's no connection here, right? There's only satellite communication. How do you keep up with what's going on in the world? Eh, we're not interested. That we have a new president? No, of course we get news like that. Who's our president? For elections, helicopters come here. <coughs> a helicopter comes here so you can vote? Yes. Sometimes it comes. Wait, wait. A helicopter comes for... How many adults are here? There are three adults here. You're told to vote. What if you refuse? It flies away? We get all the news from the village, or when someone comes to visit us here. All the news. Yeah, they tell us all the news. For example, there's a new president, or the governor. Do you know who's the president now? Putin. Isn't there a new one? No way. <laughs> Have you heard anything about Alexei Navalny? I have. What? I've heard a lot about Navalny. Especially recently. And what's your opinion? I personally don't have an opinion. Maybe he's a good person, maybe not. I'm nobody to judge. What do people say about him here? Some say he's a very good person, others say he's a very bad person. That's the information we receive. We're not much into politics here. Well, maybe some people are. Maybe old men are. I don't know. You, have you heard about Navalny? No? I'm not interested. What is the government doing for you? Any benefits? Yeah, it depends on the number of deer. So you're paid for reindeer? Yeah. And how much do you get? I can't say exactly. It depends on the number of deer. For instance, you have 420 of them. Yeah. So how much is the subsidy for you? 120 of our reindeer are privately owned. And 300, those standing separately, are state ones. Those are state reindeer? Yes. So you herd state deers together with our private ones. So you have 120 deers of your own and 300 for the state. Yes. How do you tell one from another? We mark them. You do? You see here. This ear is cut like this. The other one is cut from above. This is your deer? Yes, it is privately owned. What about state ones? These are all privately owned. Why does the state need reindeer? I don't know why the state needs reindeer. Who do those 300 reindeer belong to? Federal State Unitary Enterprise. It's called FSUE Uchigeskoy. So they pay you to herd their deer. Yeah, we receive salary. How much? The salary. How much? 334 bucks. For herding 300 reindeer. Yeah. Don't they graze on their own? No, why? We keep an eye on them. We bring them here every day. We protect them from wolves. Do wolves come here often? Yes, very often. There's a pack of four around here. They don't come close to the tent, though. Our dogs alarm us in case they come. The best pair of eyes of a reindeer herder is that of his dog. The dogs are like us, right? Yeah, like us. Dogs stay outdoors in any weather? Yeah. When it's negative 60? Yeah. When it's negative 70, dogs are outside. Negative 60 or negative 50, dogs are always outside. So they never enter the tent? No. Their puppies are amazingly cute. We take them out during the day. Their fur is really thick. They don't get cold. So don't worry for them. It's not that we're treating them bad. If they're spoiled, they won't do their job. We don't give them warm food either, only cold. What do dogs eat here? Meat. Of reindeers? Bones. Yes, of course, reindeer meat. We share our own food with the dogs. The herders keep their dogs to herd the reindeer and protect them from predators. The most dangerous predator here is a bear. They're especially dangerous in spring. When new baby deer are born, they might be attacked by bears. Just yesterday, I went to the other tent. A herder had brought two heads. I myself witnessed how naughty puppies of Yakutian Laika can be more dangerous than predators. 
Unlike their parents, they didn't exactly follow the tradition of always staying outdoors. So they used any opportunity to get in the tent and warm up by the oven. So it's nighttime. The fire is flickering in the narrow stove. I've wrapped myself up in a sleeping bag, blanket, jacket, and reindeer skin to survive. No one could foresee this ending badly. At around three, these cute little guys decided to come in to warm up a bit. They got into the tent and accommodated themselves next to the fire. Eventually, they accidentally made the firewood next to the heater fall. They got scared of the noise they had made and left the tent. None of us inside the tent had noticed it. We woke up because the tent was full of smoke. Firewood started smoldering because of the hot stove. Thank God somebody noticed it on time. The Evians forgive the puppies for being so naughty, as they'll grow to be big, smart dogs that will protect the herd. Reindeers mean fortune for the Evians. How much does a good reindeer cost? Alive? Let's begin with a live one. <laughs> well, we don't sell reindeer. Well, let's say you need a new snowmobile. Where do you get the money to buy one? We save up. From hunting, from selling antlers. Now's a good time to sell antlers. The price is 11 USD per kilo. We can get 300 kilos at once. Multiply that by the price, around 3,500 USD. So you can easily get a new snowmobile. We get new details for it. First, we get the essentials. Maybe we need a new engine. So we buy what we need the most. So you wouldn't just go and sell a reindeer? No. We wouldn't sell a live deer. What about meat? A kilogram of meat costs about 6 USD. But it's not like we can sell a lot. We wouldn't kill and sell, let's say, 10 deers at once. What about hunting? Is it legal here? Yes, we Avians are indigenous people. We're allowed to hunt mountain sheep, not to sell, but for personal consumption. What about, um, what about wolves? Yes, we can hunt predators also. We don't have any special permissions. The most important is that none of the species go extinct. Like bears and wolves, for example. We'll hunt mountain sheep, for example. Uh, elks, also. To put it short, we don't hunt excessively. If there's a group of five, we can kill one. It depends on the weather. For example, starting from September, October, meat doesn't go bad easily. So we can kill two. In summer, we would just kill one, since meat goes bad faster. We hide meat under ice, or we bury it underground so it doesn't go bad. We dry it, we smoke it. When you slaughter a deer, how long's the meat last? Around 20 days. Meat is our main food here. Tell us about your diet. What do you usually eat? In the morning, we eat meat. Also for lunch and dinner. Always meat. Sometimes maybe fish, but not so often. Depends on the season. Fruits and vegetables. When one of us goes to the village, he brings some here. And we eat it while it's still fresh. That's it. We also drink a lot of tea here. We always drink tea with some snacks. For example, flat bread, like this. Flour, baking powder, salt. These are all the ingredients. You wouldn't see a fat or obese person here. Excuse me. There are none. Of course, nowadays, the Avians are affected by globalization as well. There are only 20,000 Avians left. Young people move to cities and don't practice traditional reindeer herding anymore. According to a 2002 census, more than half of Yakutia's Avians lived in urban settlements and not in nomadic camps with reindeer. We used to have a lot of deer, almost 20,000. Now there are just a few left, maybe 6,000 because there are no more reindeer herders like us.
People have changed. They all want a normal life now, not like ours. We have been living like this for years. Now people don't want it. They want to come and go. How long do Avians live? Long? I don't know. Some live longer, some shorter. Every fate is unique. How am I supposed to know it? Do Avians have many children? I have three. Three? You're the last herder in your family? Yeah. So your kids will not follow? No, they already got used to civilization. Where do they They're adults already. Where do they live? Which city? In Yakutsk. What do they do there? He works in a hospital. One of them... No, two. One of them studies somewhere in St. Petersburg. Do you keep in touch? Yes, with all of them. Do they come here to visit you sometimes? Oh, they come once or twice a year. But they're not interested in reindeer husbandry? No. And I can't force them. It's their life. Every fate is unique. We don't have civilization here. Here we don't have... We have this light, this nature, everything. But they want civilization. What's good about that civilization? They've simply got used to it. So the job of a reindeer herder will disappear soon. I don't think so. Why do you need so many reindeer? Why do you need them in the modern world? You and your ancestors have been herding reindeer for years. For the sake of meat, clothes, etc. This was your lifestyle. Then civilization was brought to these lands. Cities were built. Electricity was provided. An opportunity to study and work in a city. So it's not about surviving anymore. So, these are some traditions that you want to preserve. But what's the sense of preserving them personally for you? Why do I personally preserve the traditions? I think it's something genetic. It's in my blood. We are a free people. But we still bring our tradition with us. Tell us about your customs. About your culture, your customs. We believe in nature in the sun, in the moon. We move with the moon. By the way, today is the full moon. Reindeer are stronger in the full moon. They can walk longer. Any holidays? Reindeer Herders Day is around 15th or 20th of March. There's a contest there we also take part in. This holiday is celebrated annually in the north of Russia, Reindeer Herders Day. Peoples of the Arctic region gather and compete in reindeer and snowmobile races, hold workshops on national clothes sewing, and so on. Festivals like this one are important to preserve the dying out northern culture of reindeer husbandry. Besides having fun, people also discuss serious issues like how to control the wolf population or how to divide grazing fields. Reindeer Herders Day has been celebrated since Soviet times when it was launched by the state. This festival is so important to northern peoples that in 2022 in Yakutia, it was announced as a national holiday. The government said that the festival, and I quote, marks the reindeer herders role as keepers and agents of national traditions. Another way to preserve tradition is to make it a part of popular culture. For example, to spread the story of your family, like Margarita, an Ivian girl is doing. So I have a family story. To put it briefly, my grandmother, whose name was Kindikan, was found in a camp that completely died out from pox. It was around a hundred years ago. There was a severe pox epidemic then. So many villages and camps died out completely. According to extant tales, she is said to have spent the whole summer there, in other words, really long. She was only four years old. It's still unknown how she managed to survive. It's a mystery, but it's a fact. Her name was Kendikan. By far my craziest dream now is, and I've started this project, everyone knows Mulan, Pocahontas, Moana, and there will be a new character very soon. 
Kindikan. I want this story to draw attention to rare indigenous peoples going going extinct. People who lead traditional lifestyles, despite globalization and other stuff, they keep their culture alive. They adhere to their beliefs. The region of Yakutia is a unique place. Although the area is so huge and we are so few people, there are a lot of ethnicities that are living here. There are Avians, Ivinks, Yukagirs, Dolgans. It's a cradle where rare, small-numbered indigenous peoples live. They live now and they will totally be alive in the future. The girl that survived in Tundra has already become a national hero of people in Yakutia. To make the character known worldwide, Margarita plans to fly to space with the help of Elon Musk. While developing my project, I found myself participating in a contest by Elon Musk and a Japanese entrepreneur, Yusaku Maezawa. They launched an open competition in March 2021 to find eight candidates for a civilian space flight around the moon in 2023. I've registered there and I've sent my idea, my dream, Kindikan. Now I'm at the third stage of the competition. Musk hasn't signed the Yakutian girl up for a space flight yet, but he's already receiving gifts from the locals. Here is a knife with a mammoth tusk handle. Here is the SpaceX logo. It also symbolizes the energy of the union between a man and a woman. This is to bless the flight. It is also to remind that our world is really fragile. And while exploring space, we should keep this balance, since the Earth is our home. Through this moon hype, we hope to promote our culture. Obviously, one of the main reasons why people abandon their culture is the hardship of living in the middle of nowhere. Not all locals participate in Elon Musk's projects. Some aren't even familiar with the internet. I went to a wireman who installs fiber optic cables. I asked him how much it would be for us to get a cable. It's no more than a kilometer from there. He said, 3,500 USD. 3,500 USD is too much for us. Otherwise, I really want us to have some connection with the world. Our youngsters should see what's happening in the world, at least to keep up with the main news. How does, um, how does your life change as time goes by? I mean, with all the technologies that appear, civilization, does it have any effect on you? Sure, look, we got a laptop here. We have a hard drive. For example, our kid can watch cartoons. We can watch movies. When somebody goes to a village, we ask them to download some movies for us. And then we all watch it here. The Avians can learn how to preserve culture in the era of modern technology from their neighbors, the Avinks. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Ayana project. It's a voice platform that helps to translate from Russian to the Evenki language. Its work is based on artificial intelligence. The word Ayana itself means good, kind. Artificial intelligence allows it to identify right accents and words. If the platform doesn't know a word, it can happen also, it will suggest some alternatives. More importantly, the concept of Ayana is not only about words. There are also pictures and animated GIFs. It can also play a song for you, or even tell you about famous events. My name is Nikolai. I come from Uzmai. Put the name of your town in the following sentence. What's Evenke for teacher? In 2009, I graduated from the Arctic High School in the town of Neryungri. That's where I got familiar with the Evenki language, which is the language of my ancestors. My teacher was Claudia Inokentevnia Makarova. She drew my attention to the importance of preserving the Evenki language. I believe that digitization, the IT sector, should help the events keep their identity, as well as other indigenous peoples of the North. IT can be an effective tool. While some people develop web applications, others keep getting up at 5 a.m. to herd their reindeer. What's your usual daily routine? What time do you get up? The oldest one gets up at 5 a.m. He stalks the fire, checks everything around, checks the deers. We tie some reindeer. 
So he lets them go to tie other ones. At three, at five, he's already changing deer. He inspects the environment around, footsteps, wild animals. And someone else is going to take our deer. Somebody else. We search for voids like this one in the river. And we extract ice this way. It's drinking water. We cut it in small pieces and put them in the tank next to the heater. And that's how we get water. Leading a traditional lifestyle, these reindeer herders are not concerned about the outside world's problems, even coronavirus. Have you heard about coronavirus? Of course. Your thoughts? No thoughts. Since we breathe with fresh air, the virus doesn't get here. We drink herbal remedies here. I offered you some currant leaves, for example. They are full of vitamins, natural ones. None of you have been sick with coronavirus? No. Not a single case? No. We get different information. Some say you must get the vaccine, others say no. You should. You should. Some people say there are microchips in the vaccine. We don't have enough information, you know. So, we just believe whatever is said. How do Avins treat dental issues? Oh, what's the name of that... Oh, that thing on a tree. Bark? Yeah. You just apply it where it hurts and it's cured. It's cured? Yeah, you don't need any pills. So you don't take any medication? No. Just natural remedies? Yes, only natural remedies. There are all kinds of herbs growing here. We gather them, and that's it. We boil some of them, others we just heat a bit. If there's a wound, just apply a warm leaf on it, wrap it, and soon the wound will heal. Or maybe just in a week? So you can move it. How's life in general? It's fine. You satisfied? Of course we are. Fresh air, organic food, no harmful emissions. It's fine. We should start building houses. It's quite a young community. Next year we'll start building houses. Right here? Around here. Where we live, where we nomadize. What do you mean by houses? Some portable constructions? No, 4 by 5 meters. For example, something like huts. This year, we decided to get engaged in touristic activities. At first, I thought to start there, where the traffic infrastructure is good. I thought of building a cabin and welcoming guests there. But then I was told that it's better to show our life as it is. The way that we really live here. So, starting this year, from January, right? We have been welcoming tourists here. Of course, we want to earn some extra money. But how do you take a shower in winter? We set up a separate tent as a bathhouse. It depends on the place. If we stay in a certain place for long, we always set up a bathhouse. We set up a tent, place some stones, cover it with poles. That's all. What are the limits of your area? The area of the Omyakonsky district is all over here. You see that mountain? That's where the district starts. And it goes until Kolmya. How many kilometers? 50 kilometers from here, I think. This is all your land, all those 50 kilometers. Yes, yes, there and also there. Even more than 50, probably 60. How many people are there in your commune? We are four. So four people own all these lands. Yes. Four people. Yes. All those 50 kilometers. Yeah, it belongs to the reindeer. And they belong to you. Yeah. So nobody can come to live here, to this land. Well, they can come. Can I come, for example? I like it here. I'll buy some reindeer. I'll come here and I'll say, here will be my tent. Will you kick me out? If you go through a formal registration, of course not. Where can I do that? You need to register your reindeer. Consequently, you might need to start a commune. I see. So you can't just put a tent here with your reindeer? No, you can't. So you have 300 and 120 of them in this area? Yes. So 300 state-owned deers and 120 of your own ones. Yes, 120 belong to us.
open space, freedom, and reindeer. These are the keys to happiness for the events. A key to my happiness is your like and comment. Don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss new videos. We have everything we need to be happy. You have everything, we have everything. They have it all. What does one need to be happy? What will you need on your deathbed? I don't know. The most important thing is to stay safe and healthy, and that your loved ones are safe and healthy. I think this is happiness. When you have your reindeer, <laughs> how many reindeer do you need to be happy? We just need them next to us. That's it. Don't you want more of them? Sure, but nature will take care of it. The law of nature works here.